Hey everybody, Aaron Bishop here. Welcome to the Bishop's Blurb. In Matthew chapter 5, we read what has become the go-to passage for pronomians to make their case. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Well, what does it mean that Jesus fulfilled the Torah and the prophets? The way that many understand this word is that since Jesus fulfilled the law, then there is no expectation on anyone else to seek to live up to the same standards of the law. This view in practice makes Jesus out to be saying, I did not come to abolish the law, but to abolish the practice of the law. This is a completely logically inconsistent statement. So let's see if we can understand this word better to figure out what he's talking about. The word that's translated as fulfill in this verse is the word pleru. This is a word that simply means to cram to the fullest, or to level out a hollow place, or to fill to the brim as in a cup. This kind of language of fulfill and abolish, it was actually quite common when it came to discussions of the Torah in the first century. To abolish the Torah was to make the Torah of no effect. To fulfill the Torah meant to preach its precepts to the fullest extent of their meaning. So let's look at this word in other verses and see if this idea of Jesus fulfilling the Torah, meaning accomplishing it so that I don't have to, still applies. Romans 5.13 May the God of hope fill, pleru, you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. If we read this verse in the same way, with the same view on fulfill, then it seems as if Paul is wishing that God bring to an end all joy and peace and fulfill it in the people of Rome. That doesn't make sense, especially with the rest of the verse, where he continues that he has a desire that hope abound in the people of Rome. Or Ephesians 1, verse 23, as he's speaking about the church, he says, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills, pleru, all in all. Jesus plerus, the church. Now we don't think that this means that the church has no more purpose, or since it's been filled by Jesus, then we have no need of it anymore. Why do we then import this idea upon the law? When it comes to the law, why do so many desire to make the idea of Jesus fulfilling the law to mean that it is of no effect whatsoever? Instead of leading with our preconceived notions of what we think the Bible should say, how about we let the Bible speak for itself? Jesus did fulfill the law. He filled it with meaning and interpretation. He filled it up to the brim. And now, because of his ministry, we can understand and interpret and apply the law more fully than would have been possible 